I'm Tactical Pascal, welcome to the channel, I hope this finds you all safe and well. This video is on the best settings in VR for the Oculus Quest 2 in DCS World. Let me start by saying that I've had VR for years. I've tried setting after setting to get it looking and playing good, but I never quite found that sweet spot. I've struggled. Uh, the immersion's great, but after a while you're going to notice some shimmering terrain or objects in the distance that just look a bit weird, or the dials might be blurry in the displays. You can't quite read if that's 36,000 or 30,000 for a target on your radar. Well, fear not, because I've finally found the best settings in the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, there's one download that you need, and it's not going to break any integrity checks. It's nothing to do with VR shaders. It's simply the Oculus Tray Tool, the latest version. Now, before I begin, here's my system specs. As you can see, not amazing. So if you've got a rig equal to or better than mine, you're going to get much or even better results. Not much better, even better results. Uh, this has been tried and tested by a few members of Tactical DCS, and they've absolutely loved it. The link, of course, to the Discord is down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get cracking. So we're going to open up the Oculus Tray Tool. Now, the first thing we're going to do is come across to the tab that says Quest Link, and we're going to click it. And then we're going to change the encode resolution to 2912. If you've got a better system than mine, you could probably bump that up to the 3648. But for now, try 2912. Did I say 2612? Anyway, 2912. Now, bitrate, put that up to 500. This is going to increase our visuals initially. Then we're going to go to game settings. Now, leave everything here alone, except for one thing. We're going to change the default asynchronous warp to 30 hertz. Now in the past I've tried to have it locked at 45, I've had it 45 adaptive, I've had this, that, whatever. Now the 30 hertz mode is going to lock your frames somewhere around 26 frames a second. Now that might sound really low and you're all, I can imagine you scoffing in your chair right now. Try it in DCS because it's 26 in each eye. So you're sitting there at a much better resolution than you think. And trust me, it runs smoother than a wet seal. It's awesome. So let's move on to actual DCS settings. So here we are in DCS. You'll notice how big my uh, my screen is because I've got it set on my VR settings. So come up to your options straight away, and then we're going to go to our VR tab. Now the first thing you want to do is whack up your pixel density to about 1.7. 1.8, maybe higher again if you've got a better system than mine, whack it up to 2, why not? But try 1.7. Every single dial will be crystal clear in your headset. Every single radar contact you will see, you'll be able to see the height, the heading, all that good stuff. That will be clear, there's no more blur, essentially. Uh, go to your system. Now, I have it set as so. So textures are on high, terrain textures are on high, civil traffic off because I'm fighting a war, why would they be kicking about? Water's on medium, again I could bump that up to high, it's not a huge difference for me when I'm in VR. Uh, visibility range I've got is on high, obviously good for spotting our targets. Heat blur to off because it looks weird in VR and shadows to high. Now that's going to affect uh, when I'm obviously turning in the cockpit, it's going to affect the sort of resolution of that shadow that cuts across the canopy. Um, I wouldn't recommend having it on anything other than high because high looks brilliant. Resolution, that's just for my native monitor, that doesn't affect anything in VR. Aspect ratio, again, that changes when you put your VR headset on. Monitors, don't need to touch that. Rest of the cockpit displays, if I've put them in 1024, I haven't put it 1024 every frame because it doesn't need to be there. 1024 is just fine. Now comes the important bit. MSAA, I've set that to two. Again, if you've got a better system than mine, than mine you can probably bump that up to four. I wouldn't be surprised. That's going to stop all the shimmering you get. So if you're looking down at the ground and there's a load of buildings, or there's a load of roads, or basically anywhere there's something flat, um, you get this sort of shimmer, like a... I can't even think of the word. What's it called? Like a mirage. Not the French baguette plane, but the actual uh, <laughs> little shimmering effect you get on a hot day. So that's going to get rid of it. Depth of field, leave it alone. Lens effect... Have flare on because again it looks cool. Motion blur, leave it alone. SSA, SSLR, leave them alone. Cluster on grass, again, this all here will affect um, your rendering and how everything looks. I dropped my clutter on grass down to 150, I've no real need for it. Trees to 90%, preload radius just above the medium there. Uh, chimney smoke density is down at zero, you can bump that up if you want. Again, 
I haven't noticed a huge difference in VR and gamma 1.5. Next, we've got anisotropic filtering or anisotropic. I can't even say that word. Anyway, this anisotropic filtering, there we go, nailed it. Uh, that's going to affect the shimmer as well. And when you're close to objects, you're going to see if you don't have this up high, you will see a lot of shimmer and then it just looks a, looks a bit rubbish in VR. So whack that up to 16. Terrain object shadows. Now, this is a big one. I'll leave them off. Um, you'll still see your shadow on the ground. So if you're flying a helicopter low level, you'll see your shadow. If you're flying low level in a plane, you'll see it. It's going to turn off the shadows for the trees and for the buildings. Uh, this is because um, it looks a bit weird, certainly when I've had it in VR. Um, the shadows turn sometimes. You know the way the clouds turn sometimes now? Um, well, the clouds do turn. It's not sometimes. It's all the time until we get the new ones. Um, the terrain object shadows, I find that they um, look a little bit horrible as well. So just turn them off and it looks brilliant. Uh, cockpit global animation off. Messages to one. Scale GUI at 1.5, which is what my mind's massive. And then hit your save button. That's it. That's your settings. What you need to do now is go into VR and then comment below if it's affected you and let me know if it's made it better or worse. If it's made it worse and you can find a way to make it better, let me know and let everyone else know in the comments below and then hopefully we'll all have a better VR experience. All the in-game footage you've seen um, during this video, that's been from um, my VR headset directly into my computer. I normally use OBS but I found it looks a little blurry when you're watching it. It doesn't give it a true representation. So what you see on screen now is a rough representation of what I see in VR. Of course, in VR, it's much more immersive and you're there. Um, you can't really capture that on video. So I used Shadow Play for these VR recordings and it turned out quite well. Obviously, I've just stretched it a little bit so it fills the screen uh, and I've done that using Premiere Pro. That's pretty much it for the video itself. Um, if you do want to know how to record in VR, I'm going to do a video on that soon enough um, so you can show your friends how amazing DCS can actually be in, in VR, even though it's still not optimised for it. That's coming soon enough. Um, it is it is very good fun to fly in VR. Um, coming soon is also going to be our beginner series. So if you're new to DCS, we'll be covering everything from instruments to multiplayer and everything in between. Uh, it's going to be fun. So uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to check out my good friends over at the Air Warfare Group. Juice and the guys there do some absolutely fantastic videos. Uh, and they don't get enough love, so feel free to go over and subscribe to them as well. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Tactical Pascal, out!